I've heard it said by some leadership coaches that no pastor should ever get too tired. That fatigue is simply a sign of having bad boundaries, making bad choices, or the result of deep-seated sins. Sometimes that's true, but my experience is that fatigue is part of the reality of spiritual leadership. Now, I love the story of how Jesus calms the storms. There's so much that God's spoken to me over the years in the passage, but the older I get, the more I pay attention to Jesus simply asleep in the stern of the boat. I think sleep wasn't just because he had faith to overcome fear, but it's rather a picture of a body that was just worn out. The context of the story finds Jesus teaching and healing. There's huge crowds following and pressing around him everywhere he goes. Like us, Jesus was constrained by the limits of his human body. Just can't keep his eyes open any longer. Now, there's inherent fatigue that comes as part of the work to which we're all called. It's emotionally and spiritually exhausting to be present to people in their grief, their personal and relational breakdowns, their theological deconstruction, and just plain sinful choices. And all of that is on top of the, on top of the cycle of weekly services that we care for. We are in a caring profession, and our care is costly. Now, I've always loved the story of Mark 6, where Jesus has gathered his disciples together as they've come back from their first time out in pairs to proclaim the kingdom. They're excited, they're full of stories, full of themselves, and like all mission trips, they're worn out. Now, Jesus pays attention, and in his care and tenderness, he says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Now, what happens? It says that, so they went by themselves by boat to a solitary place, but many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got ahead of them to where they were going. The people invaded their retreat center. Now, has that ever happened to you? Sometimes I go to a coffee shop to get away from my computer and my phone. It's a chance to recharge, to read, to journal. More than once, I've had people who know me make themselves at home at my table grateful to have a pastor to talk to. Now, Jesus' example in moments like this is that he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Love required in that moment that he give them what they needed, spiritual and physical nourishment. So yes, sometimes our work requires more of us than our bodies have. But having said that, let me be quick to say that no mature leader is exhausted all of the time. The mature leader knows that there's seasons of work and rest, sowing and reaping and letting things go fallow. Some of us need to pay attention to those rhythms in our lives. Is your life characterized by chronic fatigue? Are you one known to be an overworker? And if you're not sure, I suggest you ask your spouse, your kids, your roommates, your friends. Listen to them. They see your life clearly. And I want you to search your heart for the warning signs of of unhealthy fatigue. Look especially for the pattern of self-pity, that emotion in which one feels sorry for themselves, like you are in great suffering. Self-pity is deadly to your faith, and one of the most common pitfalls leaders land in when they endure fatigue for a very long time. Self-pity, friends, is a product of only seeing half the truth. Like the disciples in Mark 6, after feeding the 5,000, Jesus sends them into the lake to go ahead of them. There's an example for us there. Again, everything seems to conspire against the disciples. They're rowing all night against the wind, and they barely get anywhere. They're exhausted, they're angry again, and they're afraid. And in verse 52, it says their hearts were hardened. Hardened because they did not understand about the loaves. What didn't they get? You see, after feeding the 5,000, the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of leftovers, one basket for each of them. Their hearts were hardened to the whole truth. Yes, they were invited to care for the people with the love of Jesus. It's sacrificial and costly compassion. But they missed the truth that Jesus was able to provide all the resources and strength needed for the moment. Friends, you and I do not need to do this work alone. Jesus' invitation to us is to do the work with him and in his power. And we also have his invitation to take care of ourselves. Come to a quiet place and get some rest. We need to carve out times for real Sabbath, 
unencumbered times of physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual rest. Would you take a few moments this week to walk through the reflection questions I provided? What is your level of fatigue right now? What's your next step towards rest? Are you in trouble, perhaps stuck in self-pity? Don't forget to reach out for help if you need it. You're surrounded by people who love and care for you.